Hey, Matt, how's it going? Fantastic, Travis. So, uh, what do we got here? Yeah, so Whitmore sent us some really cool products. We have the Lustor Lubrication Storage System by Oilsafe here. Oh, fantastic. So, I know Whitmore, those guys have a lot of great lubrication and reliability products, and I think you've worked with them a fair amount in the past as well, right? Yeah, I see these guys at a lot of conferences, and I've used a lot of their products on customer sites to help build their lubrication programs. Yeah, fantastic, right? We talk about lubrication rooms being the heart of any lubrication program, right? So, it's imperative that we do things the right way. We have world class facilities specifically in our lube room that shows the drive and initiative at our site we're trying to focus on specifically within lubrication. Right. Yeah. yeah, so let's dig into these a little bit. You know, so the first thing you're going to walk up and see right here on this unit is the lubricant identification system. So we see this particular unit has a red triangle for the lubricant and the syllable and refillable container, red triangle as well. So it's very easy to see that this lubricant goes into this container. You label the machine, you're good to go. Right, so kind of throughout the entire process, right? Making sure we dedicate a top up or handling container, making sure we dedicate a storage system for this guy throughout the entire process with a color, a shape, and a name to address all those issues to minimize cross contamination. Right, yeah. So let's take a look back behind this guy and see what we got. Yeah, let's dig in here. When we take this cover off, one of the first things you're going to see is the filter, right? So this unit comes with a standard 10 micron filter, mm -hmm. but based upon the lubricant's viscosity, the micron size can go up or down. Sure, right. Another thing I look at with filters is going to be cleanliness goals, right? So as I build my reliability program, I want to take a look at certain lubricants may want to be cleaner than others. We think about hydraulic systems may need to be specifically clean, turbine systems may need to be really clean, versus some gear oils can be not quite as clean as some of those systems, right? So we may want to dial some of these guys from a 10 down to a six or three, depending on the application. So yeah, good options there. All right. Another key thing about the filter, right, is we have this gauge here. So you can see green, we're good to go on the filter. If it turns red, let's change the filter. Sure. Another thing based upon the lubricant's viscosity is the pump size. So we have a three to one option or a five to one. Okay, so a couple different ratios. We think about five to one. If we move up to some of those viscosities of a 460 or a 680, it's a little higher viscosity, a little more difficult to pump and move around, right? So we may want to, to bump that up. That's right. Yeah. So we look at the air line here, which is Simple, easy air hookup into the unit. It's an air-driven pump. Okay. Quick connect to onboard the lubricant here. And a sight glass as well. You can see on your side as well. Right, great. Yeah, good little visual indicator to let you know how much is left in there and how much you need to top up, whether it's a full drum or partial drum. Uh, we've got the tap dispenser as well to be able to fill up your S&R or your top-up containers. And then on here, specifically on the top, we've got these desk and breathers, right, to be able to manage that headspace, right? So minimizing the amount of moisture as well as particle ingression is going to be breathed in over time into this system. And I know with these guys specifically, with Whitmore, that this guy right here looks sized appropriately for this system, but they offer a lot of great options and a lot of different sizes for that. Sure, breeders. multiple sizes. And let's not forget this key meter right here. If we're wanting to track consumption, want to know how much lubricant's moving out of the, in and out of the lube room, got a meter to check uh, that. Nice little feature there. Sure. So with this unit here specifically, I know there's a couple different operating modes as well, right? So I know we look at specifically moving from the drum to the system itself. So yeah, I think, let's go over that. Okay. So we have this chart back here. You can see it? It tells you which way to set your valves for what you're trying to do. So there's three different modes, as you said. We can filter out of a barrel. As we know, incoming lubricants aren't always clean. So cleaning that lubricant before we put it in the tank huge, right? Sure. Once it's in the tank, if a lubricant's set too long, maybe the additives settled down, let's stir those up, agitate those a little bit so we could do that. And then if we want to take lubricant to a machine, we can filter out of the unit into the syllable and refillable container to take it out. Yeah, nice. A lot of great options there, making sure we're filtering through the entire process as we handle these systems themselves. And this is a great option here with the 65 gallon unit, but I know we've got a couple of more here as well, right? So kind of walk me through what we've got here with these two. Right, so depending on the consumption in your plant, a large plant, lots of volume in the lube room, you might use some like these, these are 130 gallon units. Or if you don't have much, or you want to use a remote like you talked about earlier, we can go with this, just filter out of a barrel with this wall mounting unit. Okay, great. So good flexibility and adaptability depending on your system and your size, right? You may come into some site 
that they may only have five or 10 gallon uh, reservoirs or sumps throughout the entire system. They may go with something smaller with this wall unit, but you may have some sites that have big, big ranges, right? So we may use all three options that's here. So it. very expandable, very flexible systems with these guys. So that's a great fit for that. So, you know, we've talked about the systems. We've got the three different types here. Let's talk about real world practices. You know, why why do we use these guys versus pulling straight out of a drum or something like that? Yeah, so real world practice. You know, I travel the entire country, look at lubrication systems, and oftentimes I go in and see folks filtering or not filtering, maybe just pumping lubricant out of a barrel into something like this. Sure, they'll use a little hand pump and they'll use that same pump for five or six different drums, right? So we run into issues with cross-contamination with that. Yeah, yeah. cross-contamination. I Sometimes the, the label's not even on the tank, the barrel. There's no label on here, so what's what? Right. So these are super nice for that, right? So I know the lubricant coming out of here is clean. I know what lubricant's in it with the lubricant identification system. Then you part it with these, I mean, you're good to go, right? Yeah, it's huge for me. That's one of the main things I look at when I go to a site is looking at that handling process from reception to the lube room, to the transfer of lubricants, to the actual equipment itself, making sure we've got this tagging. We tighten up that system as much as possible. We keep it as clean, cool, and dry as possible. Right. It really builds our program, right? So great fit for something like that. Yeah, so when we walk into a lube room and see these, you get the wow factor, very simple to use good to go. Exactly right. We think about, you know, uh, programs really being pushed at sites like safety and, and such. So you think about lubrication, we want good visual aids. So these are great things. Like I said earlier, you walk into a lube room, you see one of these, you see that that company or that site's actually invested in the True. program, right? So some of the guys, if they're out in the field doing things, they know, well, I better, if somebody's watching me, I better do things the right way because I know that these guys are working to invest in the reliability of their site. So another great kind of, like I said, visual change management to help drive that program forward, right? So for more information on the Lustor Lubrication Storage System, see the link below.